All right, so this is actually going to be my second video of the day blasting the CDC. And as you are about to see here, it is for absolutely good reason. So earlier we talked about uh, how they've changed their guidance on the COVID isolation period from 10 days down to five days now, plus five days wearing a mask basically. And we talked about how that is basically in lockstep with exactly what corporate America has been asking them to do. And how even according to the actual statements from the CDC director Walensky and uh, Dr. Fauci himself, uh, they were making this decision at least in large part to protect the u.s economy and to protect corporate america even if it means you know uh, potentially thousands of american work uh, workers uh, will die as a result of those policies but what i'm about to show you guys here and i mentioned this uh, uh showed it briefly at the end of my video uh earlier but what i'm showing you guys here is somehow even more fucked up than that decision that they made on that policy this is the cdc as you can see here the official cdc twitter account literally threatening the american people with medical debt uh to try to pressure them to go get vaccinated so again let me just say this first and foremost so i don't have a bunch of uh you know angry people in my comment section or whatever but i am 100 in favor of the vaccines i've gotten my vaccines uh, i'm all vaxxed up i strongly recommend everybody goes and gets the vaccines but this shit is absolutely psychotic okay so here's the graphic that they put out okay they say hospital stay dollar sign dollar sign dollar sign covid 19 vaccine free so pretty clear what the message is that they're trying to send here but just to make it even more clear they say the average hospital stay related to COVID-19 can cost thousands of dollars a COVID-19 vaccine is free and drops your risk of being hospitalized from COVID and they literally put a graphic here just to make it uh, that much more fucked up they put a graphic here of you know uh, presumably an American citizen lying in a hospital bed on a ventilator with a price tag attached to them okay literally putting a price on life let me just remind you guys this is the Centers for Disease Control, okay? This is the Centers for Disease Control. Now, why would they not put out a graphic, I don't know, mentioning the fact that uh, studies have shown, and we're going to get into a lot of the data on uh, how a system like Medicare for All could have assisted us during this pandemic, but why would you post some shit like this instead of posting about how the fact that hospital stays and the fact that we have a for-profit capitalist healthcare system here has cost lives during the pandemic? We've seen plenty of studies that suggest tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of lives could have been saved during this pandemic if we had had a Medicare for All type system. So not only are they not pushing that narrative, which is the actual scientific data-driven narrative, but they are literally doing the opposite of that to the maximum fucked up extent possible. They are threatening people with medical debt, okay? This is just absolutely demonic. So I wanted to bring you guys this, uh, this uh, basically this graphic here so I could give you a breakdown and have an excuse to talk more about Medicare for All and exactly how it could have uh, improved the situation over the course of the pandemic. So let's just get into this. First of all, just to remind you guys of the absolutely absurd and perverse nature of the for-profit U.S. healthcare system, 50%, okay, this is from October 2021, 50% of Americans now carry medical debt, a new chronic condition for millions. 50% of the fucking country has medical debt, okay? Medical debt is not a, an, a, even a phrase that should exist in a functioning society, let alone in the richest society known to mankind, okay? We are living in the wealthiest society in the history of the planet, and we are bankrupting people for the crime of getting sick, okay? It's just absolutely fucked up on so many levels, but just to give you another perspective in terms of the bankruptcies, medical debt is the leading cause of bankruptcy in the United States, data shows, and they give how to reduce your hospital bills. And you know that this is true because it's coming from Fox Business, and Fox Business would absolutely never push a narrative like this because their interests are aligned with what the people profiting off of this medical debt is aligned with. So medical debt is the leading cause of bankruptcy. So not only do does half the country have medical debt, Debt, but it's also the leading cause of bankruptcy. Again, this is this is the only country in the entirety of the developed world in which this situation occurs, okay? They're, they're using this to weaponize this to pressure unvaccinated people to get vaccinated. I wonder why people are hesitant to trust the medical establishment. I wonder why people are hesitant to trust the CDC and other government agencies in terms of getting vaccinated. And again, I say this as somebody who is fully vaccinated. I say this as somebody who has been aggressively lobbying for other people to get the vaccine vaccine, but you are doing this in the worst possible way imaginable. This is only going to feed into people's narratives that they are constructing in their heads that the vaccines are fake, that they don't actually work, that this is actually just a secret, you know, ploy to uh, make a bunch of money for people. So uh, this is not helping the cause in
in any way, shape, or form. It is only making it worse. And again, that much more fucked up because it's coming from the Centers for Disease Control, okay? Weaponizing medical debt in order to try to pressure people to get vaccinated. So just absolutely fucked up. But just to give you more of a perspective in terms of how catastrophically, uh, how, how much of a catastrophic failure our healthcare system here in the United States actually is, this graph, I think, basically says it all, okay? You see here, the United States, we have uh, an X and Y axis. One says uh, health expenditure, so how much we are spending in a per capita sense on healthcare here in the United States, and that is compared to uh, life expectancy here. So if you notice, one of these lines is not like the others, and it is significantly out of place, and that would be the United States of America, who is paying far more than every other country in the entire developed world, okay? We are paying, and it's not even close, all right? Listen, this is where the United States is at the end of this graph. Even the next country on this list is Switzerland, and they're all the way back here. And you'll notice another difference is that even when they are paying, you know, relatively close, even though it's not even, you know, it's really not even remotely close to where the U.S. is, but even when they are paying higher amounts relative to other OECD nations, they're getting better health outcomes, okay? That's the difference here. Switzerland, yes, they're paying significant amount uh, on their health, uh, their healthcare system, but they also get better results. And what is the main factor between all of these other OECD nations and the U.S.? It's the fact that we don't have some variation of a single payer system like all of these other OECD nations have, okay? We don't have universal healthcare guaranteed to every single American citizen where you can go and access healthcare free at the point of service. You don't have to worry about medical debt and you could actually start to facilitate a system that builds up trust with the citizens so that they don't feel like they are getting fucked at every single corner by the healthcare system, okay? That is the priority of what we should be focusing on when it comes to public health. Again, something that the CDC should be trying to encourage, but instead of encouraging a Medicare for all system and trying to pressure lawmakers to do what would actually be good for public health, they are instead doing the exact opposite of that. Again, not only, you know, siding with the uh, hospitals and the uh, health insurance companies and big pharma who are making billions of dollars off of this pandemic, but also using that as a threat to Americans. So again, just absolute demon shit, but let's get into some more of the data just in terms of how much Medicare for all, a single payer system could have helped us during this pandemic. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, link this entire breakdown in the uh, description below if you want to read it. It's uh, a fantastic report that was put together by Public Citizen. They always do great shit. Uh, but basically, they are arguing uh, how much uh, a Medicare for All type system could have had a, a positive impact on our handling of this pandemic and could have saved, again, potentially tens of thousands of lives. So they say here, I'm just going to give a brief re reading of the uh, introduction. They say the COVID-19 crisis should be a sobering wake up call for the American healthcare system. Despite having less than 5% of the world's population, the U.S. has had 25% of the world's confirmed cases and 20% of the deaths. Again, think about that for a second, okay? It's not just that we're spending more in a total amount. It's not just that we have had a worse COVID response than other countries. It's proportionate too, okay? 5% of the world's population and 25% of the world's confirmed cases, 20% of the world's confirmed deaths. That, that's absolutely insane. But they continue saying that of the 25 wealthiest countries in the world, the United States remains the only one that does not provide universal health care and many factors hindered the U.S. response, including failed leadership and willful disinformation from a variety of sources. But the reality is that our for-profit healthcare system put the U.S. at a dangerous disadvantage and hindered rapid response at every turn. It has also meant millions of Americans have contracted COVID-19 unnecessarily and hundreds of thousands of deaths could have been prevented. Let me say that again. Hundreds of thousands of deaths could have been prevented with a Medicare for all system. And the CDC is out here threatening people with medical debt instead of coming out and aggressively lobbying for a policy that could have actually saved hundreds of thousands of lives. And again, I agree that people should go get vaccinated. And I agree that the vaccines have 100% saved countless lives, okay? But if you actually just cared about saving the lives, you wouldn't be threatening people with medical debt. You would be advocating for a Medicare for all system that could have done that even to a larger scale than just the vaccines have been doing. But again, I'm just gonna read through a couple of these just to give you an idea of the arguments that they are uh, making here. But they say for-profit healthcare left the US on prepared for COVID-19. And they say the cardinal sin of our healthcare system is that it puts uh, profits over people and corporations over communities. While examples abound, insurers, hospitals, and nursing homes highlight how the motive to generate profit and revenue in our healthcare system distorts incentives and has hurt Americans in numerous ways. And listen, this is so obvious. You don't even have to think about it for two seconds. If you have a, an entirely or a largely privatized health insurance system, okay, what is the motivation for those health insurance companies? Their motivation is to price gouge you as much as humanly possible 
for healthcare and to, as much as humanly possible, deny you payouts to help cover the healthcare costs that you are then having go, having to go and cover in, in, in the form of co-pays and premiums and deductibles, okay? Their goal as a profitable company, the goal of a capitalist enterprise, basically, is the same as all other capitalist enterprises in any sector of the economy. It is profits. It is to expand shareholder value. That is all they care about. And if that's all they care about, and that's the main incentive within your, within your entire healthcare system, then guess what? A lot of people are going to get fucked. A lot of people are going to go into bankruptcy because they're getting price gouged for healthcare. A lot of people are not going to have access to healthcare, which is another thing that they uh, point out here. They say private insurance system uh, hindered access to care. We also have the fact that our healthcare is tied largely to employment. And so if you lost your job during the pandemic, which millions of Americans did, then you might have also lost your health insurance. Okay. So during a pandemic, not only is Biden completely giving up on the idea of even a public option, he's not even talking about a public option, but Medicare for all is something he said he would veto. Okay. This motherfucker in the middle of a pandemic said while he was campaigning that he would veto this policy that would have saved hundreds of thousands of lives during the pandemic. This motherfucker is nothing but corrupt, okay? It's just, it's absolutely insane that this is what we're talking about. The fact that we are going to get through this entire pandemic with potentially over a million deaths as we're ratcheting up to that right now, uh, we're gonna hit a million deaths without even having a serious conversation about implementing universal healthcare in this country. It's just like, what the fuck have we come to? But again, they point out the employer uh, sponsored health insurance failed at the worst possible time. Uh, hospitals focused on profit and revenue were unable to respond to COVID-19 while safety net hospitals faced closure. Uh, Nursing homes were overwhelmed and understaffed with deadly consequences for patients. And it goes on and on and on. And again, I'm going to link down this entire report because you should go read the entirety of it. It gives you you know, a bunch of different perspectives in terms of what we could do policy-wise in order to uh, make this situation better. But the, 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 the overall point that they are trying to make is pretty obvious, okay? You prioritize uh, pr profits and you prioritize the shareholder value of private corporations, then yeah, they're going to prioritize that over public health and you are going to have worse public health outcomes. It's really, it's not that common. Complicated. So on top of, you know, going out and actually fighting for Medicare for all, which Biden would absolutely never do in a million years, what else could Biden do? Well, this is something that he could do basically unilaterally through his own power. So even if you're somebody who says, you know, Medicare for all, it's not realistic, it's not going to be able to get passed through Congress. Okay, fine. Let's look at what Biden can actually do by himself. So here was a great breakdown by uh, David Dan and the American Prospect, where they point out that using an emergency uh, authorization that has been passed historically, they could use the pandemic emergency to cover every single American with COVID uh, uh, under a Medicare system. So this is how Biden could essentially do Medicare for all who have been affected by COVID, which is basically everyone. Uh, he could do that through his own power. So uh, he says how Biden could give everyone Medicare on his own. And he says, of course, that, okay, he won't, but the creative application of existing laws that would allow it uh, reflects exactly how a Biden administration needs to be thinking. So I'm just going to read a little bit of this to give you a perspective in terms of what he could do by himself. So they say the people of Libby, Montana, a population of only 27 hundred share something in common with the rest of the developed world, but not their compatriots in the United States. They all have access to single payer Medicare for all system. And as part of the Affordable Care Act, the residents of Libby who were exposed to hazardous airborne asbestos from a verma uh, vermiculite mine owned by the WR Grace Company uh, were made eligible for Medicare for free at the discretion of the Social Security Administration and the Department of Health and Human Services. And it was codified in Section 1881A of the Social Security Act and the language of the statutes refers to any individual subject uh, re uh, refers to any individual subject to an environmental exposure, though it was well understood at the time that it was talking about Libby. And they say that the fact that the chair of the Senate Finance Committee, Max Baucus, hailed from Montana, played no small uh, no small role in creating a Medicare for all for Libyans. But the principle was solid through no fault of their own. This is the key part through no fault of their own. These residents were subject to a dangerous environmental hazard that would trigger long term medical complications, just like COVID would. And the government considered it not only right to pick up the exorbitant health care costs for these individuals, and there's an environmental health hazard spreading throughout the entire country right now. It's infecting people unsuspectingly and killing hundreds of thousands. It's bound to saddle those who survive with long-term and potentially debilitating health consequences. And using Section uh, 1881A, the incoming Biden administration could give all 11 million people that was at the time that this was written it's now obviously significantly more. We have tens of thousands of Americans that have been infected. But anybody who has been infected with COVID, and if they want to be really aggressive, all Americans who have tested positive for COVID, the option of free Medicare coverage 
immediately okay so again that's what biden could do he has a lot of power okay even if you say it's not realistic and you know he wouldn't be able to get it passed through congress fine he can do a lot of this by himself okay he's not willing to do it because he's fucking corrupt and he is owned by the same health insurance companies and big pharma companies that dump in infinite sums of money into his campaign that's the reality of who joe biden is so obviously i'm not expecting him to do this he could have done this the second he took office and uh, he obviously chose not to but the whole point of this video that i'm trying to get you guys to understand is first of all the cdc has absolutely lost their goddamn minds posting a graphic like this. I mean, just absolutely fucked up, literally putting a price on life and not only doing that, uh, but instead of talking about the you know advantages of having a Medicare for all single payer system, weaponizing medical debt to try to pressure people to get vaccinated. If you want people to get vaccinated, if you want to solve the problem of disinformation and you want to solve the problem of people not trusting the medical establishment in this country, maybe don't do shit like this, okay? Maybe actually try to work towards a universal healthcare system that provides healthcare free at the point of service where everybody has access to good quality healthcare, and then you can start to build up that trust so that the next time we have a pandemic or when we have more variants coming out in the future, then people actually will start to trust it because they know that the healthcare system is not operating for profit, it is operating for them.